Well, you've written an awesome book, The Power of a Half Hour, Take Back Your Life 30 Minutes at a Time. Yes. Now, how do we do that? <laughs> well, you know, we have so much wasted time in our lives, and most people have dreams that are bigger than them, but they just don't have time to carry them out. This book is about redeeming the lost time, the waste of time, waiting in the doctor's office, uh, waiting to catch a plane, because we can do so much with our lives, but the enemy of reaching our dreams is that we run out of time. So, you know, I found out that you can show a lot of love in a half hour. Mm. You can become mighty close in a half hour. Uh, kids don't like to spend a lot of time with adults, but they love half hours. You can throw a lot of balls with your son in a half hour. You can buy your daughter a dress. I know they'd like that <laughs> in a half hour. Uh, the half hours, if we'll use them properly, they really will make our life so much more enjoyable and manageable. Yes. Now, what I, something I love about your book, um, you talked about, you said 30 minutes with God will change your life. God will never waste your time. Yes. So tell me how spending 30 minutes with God yeah. has changed your life. Again, you know, before a dream comes reality, you have to dream it. You kind of have to see it in your mind. And every morning I go to a mountain behind my church and I spend 30 minutes talking to God. Before I even talk to anybody, I talk to God. I made a commitment that before I read the newspaper and I read it all the way through, I made a commitment that I would read the Word of God first. And then I spend 30 minutes dreaming and praising God. That's the way I start my day. And I found out that when I go to that mountain, I've never come down from the mountain, that I had a problem that I either solved it or I was able to cope with it. So 30 minutes with God literally changes their life. And by the way, that's how I got the dream for the Dream Center. Mm. I would, I'd go to 30 minutes every day and I'd think about, what about this thing God put on my heart 40 years before it came to pass? It was that 30 minutes that got me going. Mm -hmm. Now, the Dream Center, you help about over 55,000 people a month. And not only that, you're a pastor, you're a husband. How do you find the time to manage it all? Well, you know, 30 minutes will solve that problem. Uh, during the day, I block my life out in 30-minute segments. For instance, counseling with people, I give them 30 minutes. That's plenty of time enough if you, if you have your life organized. I give 30 minutes. Sometime a problem will come up during the day. And problems can ruin our entire day. They can make us focus on the problem so much that we become unproductive. So I write down the problem and I put it into my little 30 minute drawer and I call it my worry drawer. Mm -hmm. And I say, I'm not gonna worry about that till four o'clock today. Yeah, I like so I write that. the problem down, put it in the drawer. And when I get to four o'clock, I say, now I'm gonna worry about that. And I take them out. But you know, Cindy, most of the time they're all taken care of. <laughs> but I've learned even if I set aside a time to solve problems, uh, it really works out great. Mm. So it's practical steps. Because I know for me, there are times I'm like, what did I do with my day? Yeah. So what would you say to people practically to sit down yeah. and plan out your 30, you know, 30 minutes segments? Or wh what would you say to them? You know, I'd say especially to working mothers. They have children. Sometimes they're alone, single mothers raising children. And uh, they say, how could we? I have not time. I work two jobs. I take care of the family. Pastor, I just don't have any time. But I'd like to tell them the story of Susan Wesley. She had 18 children, and she raised them by herself. Her husband passed away. She gave to each of her children every week, individually, from 30 minutes to an hour. And she raised great children. John and Charles Wesley brought the great wrestling revival to England. She had 18 children, but she gave them individually 30 minutes to an hour. Every one of them, every day. You know, you make time for what you want to make time. This is not a book that's just time management. It's a book about life management. The time that you have been given is so precious to all of us. Yes. So what, what's the final thing you'd say to someone watching about using that time that God has given to the best of their abilities? You know, life is precious. It's a precious jewels in a coffer called time that the Lord has given us. We all have equal amount of time, whether you're rich, famous, whatever, 
we have the same time. I believe that we need to make a commit to live our life as servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And one thing I'd like to leave with them is if they will give 30 minutes, at least two times a week, I try to do it every day to help somebody else reach their dream. It'll come back pressed down, shaken together and running over. And that's, I hope, the most important things. As I've given time, a 30-minute message I preached at the National Black Pastors Conference in Washington, D.C., sitting there was T.D. Jakes. He tells the story that when I preached the sermon, The Miracle in the House, he said, I'm going to be the miracle in the house. And several years later, he invited me to preach his first pastor's conference. He told that story, said, Pastor Barnett, you were going to be my first speaker. Well, there were 8,000 pastors there that day. I gave him 30 minutes, and he said it touched his life for eternity. So give 30 minutes away.